We are live, hanging out with David and Dave. I am Dave Philp. He is David Deutsch. And we're hanging out today with Greg Reinberg from PS122. Greg, say hello, please. Hey, what's up, guys? PS22. Not, there's no one. Um, I guess you've been demoted, because it had been 122 up until you started working with him. <laughs> Actually, the budget cuts recession. We're down, down, downgrading, downside. <laughs> That's right. Um, David, real quick, why don't you introduce yourself, and then I'll introduce myself, and then we can have Greg talk with no echo. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's kind of cool, cool, cool. So uh, my name is David Deutsch. Uh, my company is Energy Social. Uh, we do social media strategy for clients who are part of our business. Terrified of Twitter on LinkedIn. And I was once one of our giant pig. <laughs> Very nice. And I'm Dave Philp. I run a company called You Choose. You can find us at myyouchoose.com. And hey, if you're in New Jersey on March 9th and you want to see Tusk, the ultimate Fleetwood Mac tribute band, come on down. I'll give you a free ticket if you want. But you have to ask. And Greg, here we are, Greg Breinberg of PS22. How are you doing? I'm doing OK. I've never had any unfortunate incidents with pigs. So I think I'm doing I'm doing just good. <laughs> that that is good. And um, there's a reason why David is in a white room because uh, because of the pig and because of the various diseases that were given to him during that incident. It was a kosher pig, so it was okay. <laughs> oh, okay, that's okay. <laughs> all right, so Greg, right. let me ask you the first question. Because um, I, I was is that all right, David? It's all you, buddy. Great. Um, because I know you, uh, and, and you're going to tell us your story in a second, but bef before we get in that, um, did you watch the Grammys last night? I did not watch the Grammys last night. Um, the Walking Dead was on, you know, so it was a conflict. No, it, 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 that makes sense. Your love is music, and so you spend time with the undead. That, that exactly. Totally, yeah. yeah. Um, music of dead people. I know you and your kids. Uh, <laughs> I know you and the kids performed at the Academy Awards last year. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been asked to perform at the Grammys? Uh, no, not to my recollection. But um, you know, you never know. You never know. Because I was thinking about that last night. I was thinking this is where they should be because it's music. It's a night of music. But um, they turned their backs to you, Greg, and I apologize. We're all music. Well. I accept your apology on behalf of music. Um, we have a love-hate relationship, music and I. But um, <laughs> you know, this is this is uh, part of the part of the deal when you uh, do what I do. So, Greg, why don't you tell us about what you do? Let's establish who you are, what you do, and why you're here, and why, why you're awesome. Well, I am the PS22 Chorus Director. I work with 65 younglings uh, every year. It's a new batch of 65 different younglings. Um, we've gone on to do some pretty amazing things to do to the power of the internet. And um, yeah, the kids sang at the Oscars uh, two years ago and um, have been lucky enough to work with some of the most amazing artists in the industry. Um, they've been sought out by uh, many of the best, so we've been privileged to make some great music with uh, some great people. You, know. you did something cool a couple of weeks ago, too, didn't you? Uh, refresh my memory there. Uh, I don't know, maybe an you know, inauguration? Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a, these kids keep me busy, so I, you know, I, can't, I can't keep track. This morning we did uh, the Today Show, which was kind of cool. They did a segment for uh, Valentine's Day, which will be airing... Um, day of, uh, so make sure you catch that. Um, yeah, we performed at the presidential inauguration, which was, you know, another, you know, just capstone to uh, an amazing career. So, yeah, very, very fortunate. So I, so I first I met Greg, Greg last year. Last year. It, was, it was the start of the movie, a documentary called yeah, Once in a Lullaby, the uh, PSP yeah. story. And it was an amazing, amazing story. And longtime family friend directed at John, who was supposed to be here, but 
I don't know what happened to John. Hi, John, if you're watching, we're hanging out without you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was an absolutely amazing story about how Anne Hathaway came to your school in Staten Island and said, guess what, you're coming to the Oscars. And what ended up happening was the kids were much more interested in going to Disney. And they're like, what was your favorite part of the trip? I met Mickey. And you even said during the movie, Greg, you know, you're in, in, in 10 years, you have no idea what you're going to look back at your life and be like, what did we do? And what really struck me the most, if I may, was, was minutes before you were supposed to sing at the Academy Awards, two of the kids were having a fight, some sort of argument. And minutes before they are backstage, ready to go on, Greg stops everything, kneels down, and talks to the people. It doesn't say, come on, kids, this is really important. We've got to stop this right now. He took the time, and he became a teacher. Even, Even at that point, where anyone else might be freaking out, you were just like, really what you needed them to be. And I just wanted to say, that was such an impressive, one of the most impressive and memorable parts of the movie. Thank you, man. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's part of the deal, you know. It's, I'm not, um... I'm not uh, in the business, you know. I'm I'm in the teaching business, and you know that that always comes first. And uh, you know, and I think that's that's what makes the program what it is. You know, is the fact that these kids are you know, they're learning how to communicate with each other in a positive way, and I have to do everything to support that communication because you know you have two kids that are mad at each other before they go on a uh, big you know production. You know, they're going to be sitting on the Oscars going, you know, somewhere over the rainbow. You know, it's like th they can't tune that out you know you have to you have to troubleshoot those things before um, you know something like this so yeah it's just it's it's part of the nature of the job and it's you know it's it's you know it's the it's the it's the biggest art form of the job you know and I was really happy happy that uh, you know Jonathan was able to capture you know the kinds of things like that that are most important and I think most significant about the program you know such as that incident you know it was an awesome, I mean, just an amazing movie and inspiring to watch and for you to be justified with. There was Talk about the scene when Hollywood wanted your kids to sing in the way that they wanted you to sing. Talk, talk about that. That was, that was amazing, too. That was a really trying, trying uh, part of the experience. Um, you know, I was really tested, you know, in terms of what what I was willing to do as as you know someone who was being privy to, you know and allowing these kids to be part of this amazing experience you want to do right by the people that asked you that are giving these kids these experiences yet at the same time you don't want to sacrifice everything that you believe in and everything that you uh, worked hard to achieve with these kids you know for the sake of um, you know Hollywood you know, rigmarole, you know, it's like I, I had to, you know, I had to support um, and stand by what I've taught these kids. And well, basically, you know, to give a little background, you know, at, at some point uh, during the weekend, we were out in Hollywood after we did our um, sound check. Um, basically, there were, you know, they were being told by the producers that the kids uh, were singing a little bit, you know, their gesticulations were a little too much for the camera and it was looking awkward. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, and it's, it's kind of the nature of what PS22 does. They're not going to move like professionals because they're not. Um, but at the same time, you know, if I can get maybe 15 or 20 of the kids moving appropriately to the music, you know, then I feel like, you know, job, job well done. Um, you know, these kids are, they're, they're 65 public elementary school fifth graders, you know, this is not, you know, a professional act, and again, I thought um, that was what they were looking for, and they understood, I mean, you know, it's like, it's not like we, um, that we, you know, sold ourselves any differently, if you watch our YouTube videos, I mean, what you see is what you get, you know, and uh, basically last minute they were asking the kids to kind of do the, you know, the typical choir, you know, stand up tall, hands at sides, back, you know, and it just, it was going to be self-defeating, you know, to the performance ultimately for everyone. Um, and ultimately, like I said, it just goes against everything I taught them. I mean, I always tell them you, music is whole body experience. Um, you have to, you have to sing with your, with your guts and you have to use every ounce of your being to get a performance. Uh, so to kind of change all that last minute was, 
a really horrifying thought to me. So, um, but you know, I give credit to the producers. You know, they they saw my my oh my god, trepidation isn't the word. I mean, they they saw the, my horror <laughs> at at the thought of having to change it, and um, we uh, ultimately got our way. <laughs> And the kids were able to do PS22, and ultimately it was, you know, a beloved performance. I mean, I think overall, um, everybody was really on board with it, and uh, it was considered, you know, a high point of that uh, that year's Oscars show. So, um, you know, aside from James Franco's amazing hosting skills, <laughs> <laughs> who? Just, just, just gonna ask no, who, who was James Franco's who? dealer that night? Yeah. Aye, aye. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, if we could, because I think the, the big, big interesting part about the rise of PS22 and these fifth graders goes back a number of years, and it, it starts with a video getting uploaded onto YouTube, and there, uh, am I right about that? Yeah, uh, basically not, you know, just one video. We started posting videos back in 2006. Um, and uh, mostly at the time when I started posting, um, they were just some of my personal favorite videos, which, you know, I'm a huge Tori Amos fan, so I was posting a ton of Tori Amos videos. And um, they're, they're, you know, she's got like a crazy devoted fan base, myself included. <laughs> um, and uh, they're um, the Tori's biggest fan site, the site undented.com. Um, basically caught wind of the videos and um, sent them to Tori's management who you know were, you know was enamored with what they saw and uh, they set up a meeting with Tori Amos and uh, which was like I mean for me you know that was just start, like you know we didn't start with like you know I don't want to bring up any any artist names to you know to cut them down, but to me that's like the number one. You know, that's like the hugest. I mean, to this day, I still consider that the biggest milestone in my career was having Tori Amos come to you know hear our kids sing and sing with us, um, and that was the first major celebrity we'd ever worked with. And then from there, uh, once we posted that meeting uh, back, in, which was in 2007, so it was really uh, less than a year after we started posting our videos on YouTube. Um, basically, we posted that. Perez Hilton, who's a huge Tori Amos fan as well, uh, caught wind of that video and posted it on his site. And ever since, he had been kind of following the kids and uh, posting our videos. And you know, we were you know just kind of blessed with. Um, his support because he really, you know, kept, you know, brought and kept these kids in, in the spotlight um, and, you know, the power, you know, never underestimate the power of Perez, you know, because he's just, I mean, he he made the PS22 chorus. I mean, everything that, you know, in terms of the international notoriety that these kids have gotten, you know, it's all, it all stems back to him, you know, posting those videos from the beginning, you know, on his site. Uh, so we were very lucky to have a lot of people in Ashton Kutcher for a while, for like a year, uh, right when Twitter was starting to get really big, and he was a big, you know, proponent of Twitter, and he was really influential in getting Twitter to be what it is. He was posting, uh, he was posting, you know, PS22 chorus video after PS22 chorus video on his Twitter page. Uh, so we were lucky to have a lot of, you know, a lot of amazing supporters, you know, from the beginning. And, um, you know, like I say, we've been really lucky to keep that going and the internet presence alive and year after year, it just, it's, you know, amazing how it's built up and kept up, you know, it's like, it's been a long 15 minutes. <laughs> but but I, I think one thing that's important, some people might be watching this and thinking, okay, all I need to do is create some sort of content, musical content, throw it up and... Tori Amos or Paris Hilton or somebody's going to find it and that's it. But I think what they would be missing is the fact that these kids you were working with and what you were able to do with them was the fact that they were really talented. That it wasn't just you threw something up there to see what you did up. You threw up something that was really good. And you, so can you talk about what you did to, make, to help shape the kids to get as good as they were and as good as they are ongoing? Is it just something in the water or? Well, my, 
my mother has this expression, and you know, it, it's it's apropos. I mean, if I knew what I was doing, I, if I knew what I was doing, I would I would be dangerous. Uh, I really have no idea what I'm doing. I I I fly by the seat, you know, seat of my pants. I I, I do what comes naturally to me. I do what I love. I just you know, we work. I mean, half of the energy that comes out of these performances just through sheer force of will and love of music um, and bringing that out in kids and fortunately um, you know I mean I have I have basic musical skills I'm not the most incredible music musician there is um, but the skills that I do have are really work well for my job I mean I have a great ear for harmony um, I don't have the greatest voice uh, you know I can sing I'm, I can sing on key uh, but you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna win uh, any any Grammys that way. Um, I, I just, I, I love what I do, and I try to, you know, show that love to the kids, you know. And when it comes out in this, you know, auditorium, I don't know, just something really magical happens. I can't even put my finger on it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think what is amazing is that yes. You don't often hear fifth graders singing on key, <laughs> number one, but actually harmonizing and doing really, um, doing really excellent, um, discernible harmonies. You know, at, at their age, it's it's an accomplishment, um, and um, I think that not only that, but combine that with what I feel is excellent taste in music. <laughs> Pat myself on the back for that. Um, I think I've given them some amazing music. I think I've challenged them throughout the years. Um, you know, I, I I don't give them the typical what people would consider you know elementary school fodder. You know, uh, music. Um, I try to give them stuff that will challenge them, not just musically but emotionally, because um, I think you know I always say kids are like people in that you know they have feelings too and they have things they have, they have things on their parts and their souls that they have to get out, um, particularly when you're working with an urban population. Uh, so, you know, I think music is a great outlet to, you know, just get a lot of their pain, anger, all that stuff. You know, this, the same way I use music for myself when I write a song or when I, um, you know, when I use music as my outlet, it's, it's, it's to get stuff out. And um, I think the kids can really relate to that and they can really appreciate that. And um, I know that they're really uh, excited by the selections that they do. So um, I think, you know, what makes this group special is, yeah, the fact that they are amazing kids, they're talented, uh, they're a community, they're diverse. Um, it's a, uh, it's, um, I forget the word, you know, it's like a cross-section of the world, you know, it's just, it's... Um, you, every it's almost every race and nationality, religion are represented in my chorus, um, and yet they all get along. They all come together in this, you know, beautiful in this beautiful harmony, which is, you know, take you can use the word in both ways. Um, and I again, I get to be a part of it. Um, so I'm 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 a, I'm a lucky dude. <laughs> you, you also you also benefit from the documentary, documentary said this. Your principal said in the documentary. Every student is gifted. It is our job to find that gift or those gifts. So you, in addition to being an amazing teacher and having amazing kids, have an entire support structure that's enabling you. Because you could just as easily have some school where it's like, these kids need to learn math and science and they need to shut up and do their homework. Right? Which is important, but I mean, to the point where you're doing the opposite of stifling them, your entire infrastructure is based around Empowering us to be the best we're, we're working right now in a really, I mean, it's a really hard time to be a teacher. Um, yeah. It's really tough because everything is so test-based. Um, and there's so much pressure, not only put on the teachers, but most, more, most importantly is there, you know, so much pressure put on students uh, to rise to the occasion of these tests. And I think, you know, the politicians and the people who want to, you know, self-aggrandize, you know, and say how much they're helping the school system, they've completely lost sight of the fact that school has to be a well-rounded experience for a child. And if you take away the things that they love the most, I mean, when I, when I look back to school, 
um, you know, the most memorable, uh, most memorable moments were in my music classes or were, you know, those were the moments that inspired me. Those were the, those were the things that made me want to come to school doing, doing, um, plays and productions. I mean, there's so much education going on within that, you know, related to all the other subject areas that it's just amazing that, you know, they just, the people, I mean, who are in charge of, you know, these things, you know, lose sight of that and take it away um, so haphazardly and just so um, insensitively to, to what the needs of these kids are and just are putting so much enormous pressure on kids who really can't learn in that kind of high pressure environment and it's it's so sad because not every student is meant to be the best reader or meant to be the best writer um, you know what about you know I feel like our education system now or you know there's we say you know the no child left behind I mean are leaving so many so many behind um, and you know I, one of the beauties of my program is that I am able I am giving this given this opportunity to let the kids who are made to feel like failures by the system, um, I'm afforded the opportunity to make them feel really special and confident and feel like, hey, you know what, I do have something to offer and something that is meaningful, um, not only to me, but um, me, I'm meaning the student, but, um, but to their audience and you know they see that you know before the PS22 chorus was online, they were still moving audiences in a big way. I mean not not obviously, you know, at the Oscars or uh, 50 million views on on uh, YouTube, but you know, when when you're appreciated, you feel it and you know it. And the kids always had audiences that were so appreciative of what they were doing. So it's like my kids who were in the chorus um, before 2007, before they were acknowledged publicly. They got as much out of it, I believe, as the kids who have been publicly acclaimed. I mean, and those kids come back to me and tell me the same types of things that students who've experienced the public fame do. It's just how it's been life changing for them. And it showed them, you know, uh, a side of themselves and a side to life that they, they didn't really know was possible. And, you know, the power of music, man. <laughs> awesome. awesome. It's, it's a, I think what you're doing, um, and you brought up the, 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 the tough, tough job of being a teacher now. My wife is also a, an elementary school music teacher in New Jersey. And it's, teachers have been painted as bad guys, especially in this area. I mean, I hear what Michael Bloomberg was talking about a week or two ago about um, his negotiations with the unions. We've had it in New Jersey with Chris Christie and with, with um, and issues with the unions. And I think when you see somebody like you who's doing such great work very publicly with, with kids, and you mentioned very importantly the fact that they're so diverse, it's so many different kinds of kids that you're reaching who are doing such great things. That is something that really should be celebrated by all teachers and, and promoted. Because I'm sure I'm, you're not the only guy doing this. I'm sure there are other teachers all over the country who are doing great things like this. It's just, you know, we're not seeing it. Absolutely. And it's like, again, you don't have to be the most talented students. You don't have to be the mo even the most talented educator. Um, but if you, through what you're doing, make a kid feel that's that kind of special, it does change a life. And, you know, teachers do it in, in big ways and in small ways, you know, all over. And it's, you know, I, I hope if anything has come out of the success of PS22. It's just a reminder to everyone that, um, you know, you have to bring what these kids need to them and not just, you know, not make them stress out about tests and not make them feel like they have, um, you know, if they, if they fail a test, that means they're a failure. I mean, because that's really our system right now. It used to be in the old days that a teacher, if a student failed the test because maybe he's just not a good test taker, maybe he just, I mean, there are other issues going on besides intellect, <laughs> you know, yeah, then, then that, that make an achiever. And if you rely strictly on test taking to, to decide who is something worthwhile to give, you're leaving out so many, so many students and so many people 
Um, it's just such a shame that you know people don't get this, and it's like educators don't get this. I mean, I mean, I'm not talking about teachers. I'm talking about the people who are in charge of the educators, people who are forcing us to teach in a certain way, who are forcing schools to run their schools in a certain way, that are leaving out, you know, a, a large you know, portion of their, a large percentage of the population of these kids. Um, and every kid, every kid needs to have, have opportunities and um, they need to have these things presented. They need to be shown all different sides of life that they can pursue. And because, I mean, let's face it, I, 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 I could have failed math all throughout high school, all throughout, you know, college. I didn't, uh, and yet, here I am as a music teacher and doing things that, you know, I'm proud of. Um, why do we have to, you know, put these kids in a box and make them work that way? I don't want to get on my soapbox and all, but, you know, it's like, it just, it, it really is a very stressful situation, the kind of system that we're working in. It is very difficult to work around. Even in the context of my program, it's difficult. Um, but like you say, I am very lucky to have a supportive administration. I am lucky to have people who believe in what I'm doing. Um, my higher-ups have been supportive of me and have been supportive of the kids um, and do their best to work within the context of this messed up system to give them the opportunities that they get. So yes, I'm very lucky, but man, I, I, there is so much more work to be done in the system you know, to well, get I'm, it back to where it needs to be. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I graduated bottom eighth of my high school class. I was like number three, forty out of twenty or something like that. I was a lousy test, and I, and I got like a two point one GPA. And then I went to community college, got like a two point oh, and I quit. I moved out. I left New Jersey for Baltimore, and I worked to do whatever. And then when I was twenty three, I got serious and got my BA in economics and philosophy at a three point five GPA and a master's two point nine. So. You know, I was, I've always been a lousy test taker, but I guess I kind of felt the educational cracks even, you know, as many years ago when I went no, to No, I, so. I, I'm with you there, Dave. I mean, I, I honestly, I was not a great student. Um, and I, I, I mean, I've always said music saved my life. And I want my kids to just have that kind of in the background, you know, of their, of their consciousness um, as they go through this difficult system and, and, realize that listen there's there's more out there for you than just this you know than literacy and mathematics you know there's more out there and um, don't get discouraged by that and don't don't feel like if you are not succeeding in those areas that you're a failure because um, basically that's what our school system is telling children um, and it's so, oh, it's it's so sad it's so sad my friends um, one, one thing I I am curious about is uh, you've had such success and done so well, but what kind of criticism have you received? Maybe not about you or about the group, but what's, have, have, have people criticized and said, you know, he, he's, they're getting away from what's important, that kind of thing? Have you heard anything like that? I have to say, I mean, I'm really lucky in that, you know, I, I don't, I haven't come across, you know, any... Um, I think everyone kind of sees the value of what's going on, and everyone that means anything. Obviously, when you put yourself on YouTube, you're always going to get your trolls out there who are going to leave, you know, nasty comments. But I'm talking about the people who have obviously a brain and are, are you know, thinking about what they're seeing. I mean, I don't think anybody has any leg to stand on to, to tear down, you know, this program that 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 we're doing here. Um, you know, even if you don't like the music or whatever, if you don't like kids singing, um, you can't look at these happy kids, you know, singing their hearts out and smiling from ear to ear. You know, we just recorded a song the other day, um, Hall of Fame by the script. And it's like, you see these kids singing it and they just, if you have no musical inclination whatsoever, you just watch the video with the sound turned off. You just see happy kids. I mean, there's nothing that really you can tear down about that unless, you know, you're, you're Satan, you know, <laughs> unless you're Lucifer. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to, to really tear down. I mean, I, I, I listen, actually, my biggest critics throughout the years or, you know, 
I don't want to say critics, but you know, whatever. The people who have maybe given me a little bit of a hard time have been fellow music teachers who, you know, say, you know, they should be learning more, you know, classical music or, you know, more traditional. And I just, you know, I mean, I take, you know, I, I listen to what they have to say. And listen, I love all kinds of music. I love classical music. But you know what? I was forced into classical music lessons when I was very young. And you know what happened? I quit. I quit piano lessons because all I was learning was how to play the classics. So yet, if I'm able to grab them with music that interests them and music that I'm passionate about because again if you don't have a passion for your subject there's no way your kids are uh, you know no way your students are so um, for me when I was doing those piano lessons you know and and being forced into taking lessons learning about all these dead composers who really you know I wasn't ready for it I wasn't ready for it um, it it kind of turned me off of music for a while. I mean, I took piano lessons from, uh, you know, from first to eighth grade. And I quit as soon as my mother would let me. Um, you know, once I got to high school, I quit. And lo and behold, once I quit, that's when I started, like, just kind of, I, I, I just started, I had enough background music to be able to just start, you know, tinkling on the keys and creating my own music and then seeing, hey, you know, I, at least I did learn enough to fiddle around and make music that interested me um, and learn, you know, learn how to play songs by ear and, you know, say, playing songs that I liked. Um, so, I mean, I try to always remember that when I'm teaching the kids. It's like, yeah, I want them to be aware that classical music exists, but I don't want to, you know, just make it, I, I want to give them um, I want to focus on music that's especially, this is like a, you know, fifth grade. It's, you know, this, this is completely what they mean by formative years. If I turn them off of music by giving them like stuff that's just way over their heads, you know, um, I mean, classical music, so much of it's over my head, you know, and I'm, I'm lived, uh, years old also, Dave. So it's like, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to do that to them. I, I don't feel like it's fair to do that to them, especially at this age. Yeah, if I were a high school music teacher or a college music teacher, I would probably be more focusing on, you know, more of the classics. But, um, you know, I do find a way to insert classical music into their education. I mean, we do, we do uh, learn about it. We do um, hear it in our general music classes. Um, I try to, you know, find the stuff that I think will interest them. You know, you give them a little... Karl Orff, Carmina Burana, you know, <laughs> you know, you give them that and they're like, oh, ah, you know, just knowing the right stuff to give them, will they be able to pull that off as a chorus? Maybe not, you know, I mean, might be worth a try, but, you know, I do find ways to incorporate um, classical music, um, like, for instance, um, one year we did a, um, we did a, a project where the kids wrote all Renaissance chants in different modes, different musical modes, like the Ionian, Dorian, not to get too technical, but, um, and each class chose a musical mode and wrote a chant around them. I gave them like two Latin words, like Curialeus, and I don't know what these, you know, whatever, you know, any, any words that I knew, any Latin words that I knew, and they made, you know, uh, the, each class wrote a chant, um, you know, I wrote it, I helped them with that, you know, and they, but they really did, they came up with it on their own, and once they wrote the chants, I came up with some accompaniment on the piano and taught it to the chorus. And, you know, to, to this day, it's still one of my favorite projects that they've done. Um, so, you know, and you can see that on YouTube if you look it up, in like Medieval Chants or something, PS22. Um, but you have to give kids, you have to grab kids, you know, at this age. You have to, you know, you have to, you know, you have to give them music that's going to make them want to pursue it. Um, you, that's going to make them want to discover more types of music. And that's what I love is that, you know, I'm, I'm giving them, I feel, a wide variety of music. We've done classical, we, you know, like I say, those Renaissance chants. But, you know, we, you know, we focus obviously mostly on, you know, the pop. I, you know, alternative, we do a lot of alternative music. I think, you know, that's helped grab um, a lot of different kinds of um uh, followers to, you know, the choruses, channels, is, you know, a lot of the alternative music that we're doing. Um, you know, we, the country music, we, I mean, we've done lots of different, we explore lots of different genres, and I want them to continue exploring as they get older, but 
at this point, I want them to, you know, be getting into music that, you know, explores different, you know, like I say, different a different variety of different genres, but um, ultimately is stuff that's going to be something that they can relate to. You, you also seem to have a, a very big passion for VHS tapes. Is that what I'm seeing behind you there? Are, yes. are those all your YouTube videos put on VHS? Is that what you're <laughs> no, I am like a complete like classic movie buff. So okay. these are like all my classic movies that I've like recorded like from the '90s, from like TCM and AMC, right, like right. back in the '90s. And so yes, this is. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. It's uh, definitely showing my age here. <laughs> And I knew what they were, so I'm sure my age. Yes, they're equally guilty. <laughs> Dave, you have any other questions? No. <laughs> no. Um, I do want to mention, though, it's funny because you brought up, uh, I was thinking, you brought up Carmina Burana by, uh, yes. Carl, by Carl. I've actually, I, I went to music school. I, I uh, played percussion, and I've played it with the, uh, uh, the New Jersey Choral Society. Uh, in the past, a couple different times, and um, if you ever get to see it, it's actually really cool. But it's definitely not fifth grade music. I would have been bored to tears in fifth grade when I was in. in, in yeah, it was cool. But uh, I don't know, Carmina Burana. That's uh, the kids kind of they they love that. They, well, it's like rock and roll. It's like Stravinsky to a degree. You know, it's got a lot of boom, ba boom, ba. You know, it's got a lot going. Very, on. Yeah, and it's yeah. I don't know. It's uh, you know, the kids, you know, glad. You know, it's like they think of Gladiator, and you know, just like it, it's definitely it calls up a lot of imagery. I think that that excites the kids. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Dave, David, why don't you ask your uh, the final question you usually ask all of our wonderful guests? Sure. <laughs> so uh, we have x squared plus three x minus two. So I need you to solve that quadratic equation. No. So I'm a music teacher, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, I like to ask the final question: What can you share with the world? What kind of kind of learn from all this amazing experience you've had? What do you want to share with everyone out there who's watching this that we can all learn from and take away from? It? Ah, man! Find what you love, do what you love, and run with what you love, and you will find your way, man. You'll find your way. I was. I was at that point in life again, like I said before, that you know I never thought I I would get to that point in my life, and here we are, you know, interviewing with Dave and Dave. And does it get any better than that? No, he's Dave, by the way, and I'm Dave, so just to get that. Break. Oh, sorry, I got it. Back. That's okay. It's okay. It's a common. I bet you get that a lot. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it bothers us. It really does because yeah. it shows a lack of respect. On I'm me. sorry. I should have done. I should have done my research before coming on yeah, this. Yeah, show. I apologize. Great. By the way, this is the low point of your career here. So congratulations. <laughs> hey, listen. You know, we all need one. <laughs> Once you hit rock bottom, you can't go any lower. No, that's exactly the point. Everything good for you. Right? Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. to have finally made it. Yes, yeah, celebrate the fact that you're you're down there, man. You can only get better from you. Good for you. Good for you, young man. Good thank you, you, sir. Thank yes. you. Thank you. All right. So, so David, should we close up shop? Yeah. If you have any final questions or comments or anything like that. Um. No. No. Nothing. Greg, do you have any final questions or comments? Um. Yeah. What is the meaning of life? Forty-two. Oh, okay. Thanks, guys. This has been great. You're welcome. <laughs> great talking to you both. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. It was uh, great having you on Hanging Out with David and Dave. Greg Brentberg of PS22. Oh, oh. I do have one serious question. I thought you're on Staten Island. Um, how did you, you and your school uh, fare with Hurricane Sandy? Uh, we were lucky because we were, you know, we're more inland, um, but uh, we, you know, uh, unfortunately a lot of our teachers um, who live near the coast uh, went through a lot of hardship with that. Um, fortunately, our students mostly were safe. Um, I, I haven't heard any horror stories from kids that were in the school. <laughs> Indeed. Um, um, we had a couple of kids come in, uh, come in the school who uh, unfortunately lost uh, a lot, and they lost their schools and had to come to us. Um, but fortunately, you know, our population was safe. All the chorus members, all 65, you know, were safe, and um, and we were also really fortunate to be able to give back. The kids did a concert, um, an online concert with Philip Phillips. 
uh, the American Idol winner from the past season and um, helped raise a substantial amount of money uh, that went to help the victims of Hurricane Sandy. So, we, you know, we we love um, the opportunity to give back always. And um, that was, you know, something special. But, yeah, Staten Island, you know, we're trying hard to get back together. It's still a mess, though. It, it really is. There's still so much that needs to be done. And um, hopefully, um, you know, the government's going to come through with what, what they need to, and uh, these people will get the help they need. So, so how, can, how can people find out more about Moo, more about the chorus? Thank you. Well, you can uh, go to our many media, social media channels. We have a blog, www.ps22chorus.blogspot.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at www.facebook. Uh, what is it? www.facebook.com slash ps22chorus. Uh, PS22 chorus, not uh, no sp periods or spaces, and um, you can follow us on Twitter at uh, twittercom slash PS22 chorus as well. So uh, hopefully everybody will join us and um, you know keep track of these amazing kids. And on YouTube, they should just in the search bar put PS22 chorus. Oh yeah, just if you just search PS22, you just put in chorus. <laughs> you just type in chorus, and you could be sure that on the first page you'll see a PS22 chorus video or two. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, it's pretty cool. So yeah, these definitely. I uh, hope that people will, uh, you know, find us and um, get lifted by the amazing kids that I work with. So it's an amazing, it's an amazing ongoing story. story. I really, I'm really glad, really glad that I met, met you that one time last year. And yeah, I kept in touch. <laughs> and I, I'm following everything we can help you promote wherever I can because I just so believe what you're doing. And it's an ongoing, ongoing story. story. We can all write it together along and watch it in, unfold with you. Why? So it's just all awesome. stuff. True, and a, and a big shout out to Jonathan uh, again, Califer, who uh, directed the uh, documentary. Mm -hmm. It was uh, truly one of the most special gifts I've ever been given was to have that movie and to have that experience documented. Um, I feel like it really represents everything that um, the chorus has ever been about, um, and um, I think you know other chorus members throughout the years who have you know, in other choruses that have seen it. I uh, said, yeah, you know, that's that's just just like what what it was like for me, you know. That even the kids, like I say, who didn't have the public acclaim or the you know the kinds of experiences that that group had, um, they said, you know, this is this is just what it was like being in chorus. This is exactly what I remember. Um, and he did such a great job capturing the the aspects of the uh, group dynamic that were important to me. So. Um, Real big shout out to John. Love you, John. Uh, thank you for doing what you do, and uh, you know, wish not showing up. Thanks, John. Yeah, 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 jerk. But uh, <laughs> you know, we love him anyway because yeah, you know, he, I'll forgive him. He he's he's quite a guy, quite a quite a guy, and quite a teacher himself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really. <laughs> So, how can people? Is the video available on DVD now? Can people see it on demand or on iTunes? I I know John is still uh, having the film circulate at different film festivals. I know it's coming up at um, the Boulder Film Festival in Colorado uh, very soon. You should look that up. Um, I'll be posting this on our Facebook page soon. Um, all the different um, all the different venues, but I know it's uh, it's actually going to um, appear in New Jersey again soon, uh, where it had won previously. I think best documentary at the uh, New Jersey International Film Festival. Um, it's going to be appearing at the Toronto uh, Film Festival, uh, which is a really exciting one that's a biggie. I um, mean, the kids, there's a Toronto Kids uh, at a part of the festival that it's going to be appearing at, uh, and Jonathan, I know, will be up there probably to do a Q&A, so I recommend all our Canadian PS22 Chorus fans try to head, that, head up there. And, Again, even if you're not into the chorus or singing, just see this movie. John did such a great job of, you know, immortalizing what hopefully, you know, teaching is all about. And, and you know, it's not just about me and my students. It's about, it's about the profession and it's about what teachers do on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate to get a lot of public acclaim for what I do as have my kids. Um, but it's it's not to be forgotten that people are doing what I'm doing on an everyday basis, you know, in just as important and significant a way. Um, so, and I think the movie really um, really is a reminder of that. And I hope that people will get the opportunity to see it. I know um, uh, Jonathan's, you know, working hard, you know, looking into different uh, 
different distribution um, companies and trying to see what will work best. Um, but we know eventually it will be out there for people to get publicly. Um, but as of now, it's still floating the film festival circuits. So uh, try to catch it if it comes near you. It's really it's worth the watch. Watch it. I'm not. I couldn't hold a tune to save my life. Right. And I really I have no I have no musical talent. That's just nothing I do. It was an absolutely captivating. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because Greg's here. I mean, it was really actually that's what I did. When we hang up, I'm gonna trash you. No, yeah, I, um, but, I appreciate that. <laughs> it was it was the story, the way it was, it was a progression. Start with Anne Hathaway, then they had kids' problems at home. One of the kids was homeless for a while. Just watched once the lullaby. Just for PS One, just watched it. It's just a fantastic. Movie. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, no, it's something I like. I say I'm I'm one of the most one of the greatest gifts I've ever received, and uh, I hope, and I know, I know other people have really been moved by this film, and um, I, I, you know, it, it premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, it's gotten a lot of, a lot of amazing uh, acknowledgments. So I really do hope that it, that everyone will get a chance to see it publicly in some forum at some point. So. Um, you know, we'll keep you posted on our channels, you know, as to what, you know, what the progression right, is right. of that. But um, as of now, still the only way to see it is at the film festivals. Um, you can watch the trailer. Uh, you can look for the trailer on YouTube. Um, it's out there. Um, and, um, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope again, everyone will get a chance to see it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Greg. Really appreciate you having, having you us, having you. Ah, thank you. I appreciate sure. having me, having you, and me. Yes, yes. thank that you for awesome. letting us have you. Well, that was, <laughs> I'm, that I'm glad your mother had you as well. Thank you. She, she's, she's starting to be as well. <laughs> Tell her we said hello. I will do that. Thank you. I'm sure she'll be watching this. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Care, gentlemen, thank you.